It's pretty safe to say now that the contagion factor is real. Now concentrated in Europe around Deutsche Bank and UBS stocks. And the thing is, is as this intensifies, the question remains, especially for new stackers, should you go all in on gold and silver? We'll answer that question and so much more as we explore. Weekends are made for reflection, and especially as we absorb the news that has been coming at a rapid pace, some of it overhyped and others of it uh, very real and very scary with regards to the banking crisis, but also uh, what could lead to an economic crisis. It is true, Deutsche Bank is in trouble, but when they have, when have they not been in trouble? For many of us in this sector, We've been following Deutsche Bank for quite some time. It seems like they're always in trouble. A recent article from CNN, of all places, says here that, you know, this is what's happening uh, with, the, with Deutsche Bank. Europe's stock, Europe 600 Banks Index, which tracks 42 of the big EU and UK banks, closed 3.8% lower over the weekend. Um, shares in Germany's biggest bank, Deutsche Bank, plunged as much as 14.5% before pairing its losses to close 8.5% lower, which is still a pretty big, steep drop. Shares in UBS and Credit Suisse were 3.6% and 5.6% down, respectively. So the cost of insuring against a possible default by Deutsche Bank on its debt has soared in recent days. Deutsche's five-year credit uh, default swap skyrocketed to 213 basis points. And so this is a very uh, concerning here, <clears throat> but German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that there was no reason to be concerned about Deutsche Bank. It's a very profitable bank, he told reporters in Brussels, where EU leaders had issued a joint statement describing the European banking system as resilient with strong capital and liquidity positions. Well, the uh, death nail and the, uh, the epitaph for Deutsche Bank has been uh, written for years here. This could be the biggest pressure, though, against it. And who knows what's going to happen next week. It's going to be a very interesting week as uh, the markets absorb this information. However, uh, this is uh, something in a crisis that is certainly well entrenched now. I don't think anybody can deny it at this point. But where do we go from here? Well, let's go back into history a little bit more and talk about something that many of us may not be aware of. Uh, a user on my channel had posted a uh, little blurb, and I can't find it right now, but it was uh, pretty alarming about what happened uh, a long time ago, back in 1857. Many people may not realize, but there was an actual panic then, and a lot of it really mirrors pretty close to what we're seeing today. Of course, what happened after 1857, uh, and many people feel that what happened in 1857 helped spark of what was to come only a few short years later, well, if history repeats itself or even rhymes, it's going to be very concerning. So the uh, Panic of 1857 was sparked by the collapse of the Cincinnati, Ohio Life Insurance and Trust Company. Uh, the New York branch of this bank folded on a August the 24th, and the newly established telegraph system instantly carried the news across the nation. Newspapers carried the story. People panicked and tried to get their money, and others began to collapse. And, and that is what led to the run on Siemens Savings Bank. Uh, and that is a pretty remarkable, and it was a pretty big panic. And what mirrors it today is, well, instant information. The telegraph. Had the telegraph system not been invented and built it to get information out fast, there may not have been this panic. But that just goes to show you that media and uh, communication can be a very, very good thing, but it can also be a very bad thing and can lead to widespread and immediate panic. And that's exactly what happened in 1857. So what were the causes of this panic? Well, people became aware of the financial crisis, mainly due to this telegraph system and the publicity surrounding the closure of the Ohio Bank.
And we also saw the value of land in the West fall. Number of migrants also decreased and it caused financial problems with the railroads. And so it kind of uh, spread in a contagion factor into other industries. And so railroad securities lost their value. And then we had overexpansion and because of that overexpansion so quickly, we saw many railroad lines and went out bankrupt during that time. And banks were financed, and the banks that financed these railroads, they closed and they were run on these banks and a squeeze on the credit. And then we had other things, you know, like in what I'm about to talk to you about now, compared to what's happening at this very moment, especially within the last couple of months. So think about this, and you insert the blank of what you think uh, what I'm about to tell you is uh, what could be replaced by it. Wheat prices crashed. The end of the Crimean War saw the return of men to their homes and an increase in farm production. This led to a decline in Europe's purchase of agricultural products in the United States. The price of wheat crashed, seriously hitting the economy in the northern states where wheat was being produced in vast quantities. They produced too much wheat. Why? Because of the recent invention of the Cyrus McCormick Reaper. That's right. And so that was able to make things happen a lot faster and a lot quicker, almost in a semi-automatic fashion. So what is happening now that is kind of replacing a lot of the regular stuff that we do, even with search engines and the like? Artificial intelligence, chat GPT, Chat GPT, and the next version of it is out now. And you think about that and how that could hurt jobs and the like and cause, you know, essentially a panic. A lot of things are mirroring what happened in 1857. And so what were the effects that happened in this three years where this was such a great crisis? Foreclosures and bankruptcies of railroads, banks, and companies. Unemployment soared. Tension in the nation increased. Tell me we don't have tension right now. Oh yeah, most definitely. And uh, and so that is a lot of what's going on here. And so this thing lasted about three years. James Buchanan was president. And many people think that he was one of the worst presidents in history. Um, and you can liken that to who is currently occupying the office today as well. And what happened? Um, in 1861, well, we had the Civil War in April of that year. Um, so very interesting indeed. But the thing is, is should you panic? Should you go all in and panic by these metals that you see before you here? I say no, do not do that. There are other ways to prepare as well, too, for a crisis, uh, economic as well. Um, and, you know, the thing is that that what happened in 1857, the reason why it's not really talked about a whole lot these days is because, well, it ended. Um, it did evolve. It was a bad deal. Lasting for three years is pretty pretty long. We are now probably about halfway through this current, current crisis, which kind of precipitated by inflation um, of that three years. And But the banking crisis is just the beginning of, of another thing and of another factor. History may not repeat, but it rhymes. So what does that mean? If history rhymes, that means there's some sort of, of greener pastures on the other side, at least to some extent. And, you know, the thing is, is we've always seen is an erosion of the value of this, the Federal Reserve note, and the erosion of um, and the shifting and changing of our economic system. Uh, right now, many people feel that we are at the cusp of a new monetary system, uh, a great reset of sorts. And, and where a central bank digital currency will be front and center to that. So it's understandable why people are concerned about the banking crisis and about what's coming with our monetary system, about what's coming with our, with our economy, geopolitics. We have things heating up, certainly in uh, Syria right now, and things are continuing to not look any better than what they are now in Ukraine. And we also have a new... Um, a merger here or a new relationship a renewed relationship be between Russia and China. The BRICS nations are trying to decouple from the dollar. So there's a lot of things happening, folks. And, you know, going all in on gold and silver may sound very tempting, especially if you're new, especially if you think that the sky could be falling in the next couple of years. 
Um, you know, there's a lot of news out there that many people feel that, um, you know, um, what could lead to something like that, to where the dollar, how you spend money, um, where you're, uh, are you going to be tracked with every move you make with, with your, with your purchases and the like, especially with Fed now being implemented in July of this year. Um, they may not be able to do it or will do it then, but they're setting the foundation for it. It's certainly understandable to be, um, to be concerned and to be scared. However, we should not operate out of fear. We should be calm, uh, cool-headed, and uh, be collective as far as our thoughts and our actions. Um, and so therefore, think about other ways to protect yourself that don't involve precious metals. Um, there's plenty of things that you can do to prepare. One thing I've been talking about on this channel for quite some time is to buy non-perishable goods and items that are going to last you a long, long time so that you can have them stored up and stockpiled in the case you need them. It'll protect you from inflation while you have those and use those items uh, because the price of goods and services are going up. You know, think about uh, preparing in, in, in other ways. Um, you know, it's develop relationships with your neighbors. Find uh, services that they can do to help you and what you can do to help them. And maybe think about trading those services, one service for another service, or maybe even utilizing silver and gold to barter for those services. You know, that's another way that you can protect yourself. Develop those relationships and, and be prepared. Have a good store of food on hand, food that's non-perishable, and cycle through water. Um, buy extra water um, and things in case you in case the public water supply goes out for one reason or another. Um, and it's not even a bad idea to have some of these on hand. And I know people balk at me sometimes when I talk about storing cash because it's losing value at a rate of 6% per year right now. That doesn't look like it's going to slow down a whole lot. But have some of these on hand. They, believe it or not, are still a store of value, and you're outside of the banking system. Literally hold them outside of the financial institution from which you are a part. We have to partake in the, in the financial institutions for now, and, uh, you know, and I'm not even necessarily saying you should make a bank run, but you should look into the health of your bank, and maybe talk to them, look at their financials, uh, see what's going on there. Nothing wrong with being prepared in that way uh, with your financial institution. Um, and so there's other things. I believe in securing your property, secu securing your your identity, securing all um, your livelihood, your friends and neighbors. Um, security is paramount, folks. Part of that security, I believe, uh, is to have a good supply of ammunition and weaponry in your home. I think that's paramount. Um, and I don't think you can have too many bullets in my view, but at the same time, you don't want to go all in on bullets either. So there's balance with everything. Spread that fear around um, with preparing in many different ways so that when you uh, go through that crisis on the other side, well, you're going to have things in the asset column. In other words, gold, silver, preparations, food, water, skills, um, and those are the kinds of things that you need to be in, in relationships. Those are the things that will last, outlast any crisis. You have to think beyond the crisis that we are in. What's the other side going to look like? Take stock and, um, and be prepared. And it's not just about gold and silver. And so I think if you keep those things in mind, you're going to be okay. And by the way, I have a series that I've done many years ago on this channel called silver and shtf and i encourage you to check that uh, series out it's only three videos long um, and it might give you a little bit of insight on how uh, you can prepare specifically in times of a shtf scenario and what is an shtf scenario well that's when all crap hits the fan and you are left with um you know being in survival mode being forced into it all of a sudden um and I don't think we're anywhere near that scenario and situation. We got through the panic of 1857. It took um, a civil war as part of it to get through it. And who knows what this crisis will bring down the road. But nonetheless, be prepared and uh, be prepared in many different ways. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. 
Hope you found this video insightful, informative, and educational. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.